This is Prime 7 Local News. Tonight, day one of Splendour in the Grass cancelled after wild weather lashes Byron Bay. Big seas pound beaches with warnings in place for much of the north coast. And later this news hour, a Colombian drug cartel smashed open in our own backyard and justice for a royal nanny once accused of having an affair with Prince Charles. Now, Prime 7 Local News. Good evening. The wet weather has soured the return of splendour in the grass, with organisers making the last-minute call to cancel day one. Sam Payne is live from Byron Bay for us now. And, Sam, it's been a really tough 24 hours for thousands of fans who've made their way to the festival. It has, Maddie. The traffic lines have been chaotic, and that's been made worse by the wet weather. There's also been a lot of confusion, with ticket holders unsure of where to go or what was happening. The first splendour in the grass for three years, but Mother Nature had other plans. Friday's lineup of major acts cancelled at the 11th hour after Byron was swamped by torrential rain overnight. Like, it's disappointing because, like, obviously a third of the things we came to pay for aren't here. The wet weather flooded campgrounds and caused gridlock at the parkland's entrance, leaving fans trapped in lines of traffic. Up to 16,000 people were on site last night. Some had to be relocated, others slept in their cars with no amenities. Hey, we, we lined up for 11 hours we to get this. into this camping site yeah. and now we're first day getting cancelled? Are you kidding? We all... Last night event organisers changed campsites on the fly, but festival goers were kept guessing. I understand that they can't do anything about the weather, that's not their fault. I do think perhaps a little bit more communication so we knew what to expect. It would be a tough situation, but yeah, yeah. we just wanted some upfrontness. Relying on social media for updates, many thought the late cancellation was just a rumour, but organisers posted the news this afternoon. I don't know, we just don't have much information right now, so it's all just like on a Facebook group. Organisers say they had little choice but to cancel today's main stage event. Our priority is the safety of everyone on site, both um, our patrons and, uh, and our staff and team. The bars and stalls are still open for ticket holders on site. Organisers hoping fans can look on the bright side. Their patience and their uh, smiles are what we all need. Um, it's really lovely out there. Everyone's having a good time. They're being very good natured and understanding about the conditions. Splendor in the grass, baby. Splendor in the mud, more like it, actually. Back to Sam Payne, now live from Byron Bay. And Sam, what happens now with the rest of the festival? Maddie, the worst of the weather is expected to pass through tonight, which will allow organisers time to begin making a long list of on-site repairs. The clean-up will be a pretty major effort. As you saw, the festival grounds have been absolutely swamped, but the organisers believe that Saturday and Sunday will go ahead as scheduled. So needless to say, there'll be a lot of anxious people looking at the skies tonight. We're looking to refund uh, proportionately everyone for the fact that they've missed Friday's talent. So needless to say, there'll be a lot of anxious people looking at the skies tonight. They sure will. Thanks, Sam. Sam Payne mm. there, live for us tonight from Byron Bay. Wild weather is also expected to batter the coastline this weekend, with warnings remaining in place for tonight and tomorrow. Samantha Crow joins us live now. And Sam, what can we expect? Well, Maddie hazardous surf warnings have been issued for the Byron Coffs and Macquarie Coast with strong winds and dangerous surf due to the east coast low that's currently moving south offshore. We're being warned that this weekend is a really good weekend to stay away from the beach. Big surf and dangerous seas. Conditions on our beaches are set to deteriorate tonight and into tomorrow. Hazardous surf warnings issued for the entire north coast for most of the weekend. So that east coast low is coming down from roughly the Queensland area um, down to New South Wales. Um, so as that comes down, the swell will increase and we're expecting some dangerous conditions on our beaches. The surf is predicted to peak on the north coast between 4am and 10am tomorrow. At Byron Bay, huge swells of up to 5.2 metres have been forecast. The peak expected to reach 3.9 metres in Coffs and at Port Macquarie and Old Bar, swells are likely to surpass 3.1 metres. It's quite easy to get yourself in trouble with these conditions that we're about to have. Lots of strong surges coming up onto the beaches and a lot of water moving. 
So even if you are taking a stroll along the beach, just be mindful of those large, strong surges. Wind warnings have been cancelled for the Macquarie Coast. However, gale force wind warnings remain in place on the Byron Coast. Strong wind warnings remain in coughs. Very strong winds, up to 30 knots, and very high seas, which could be dangerous for crossing the bars in your boats or rock fishing. Uh, it's not a good time to go out for the next couple of days. And while emergency services are available 24 hours a day, willing to do anything they can, they've asked us to help keep them safe. It is up to our skipper to decide whether it's too dangerous for us. Uh, we would prefer not to have to put our own lives at risk to save someone in a silly situation. So please, take care. Samantha Crow, Prime 7 News. What are 24 hours on the weather front? Let's take a look now at what happened with temperatures across the board today. And we did see uh, temperatures remaining on the warmer side. Port Macquarie 18, Tari 18. But it didn't feel like that because we did have those strong gusty winds moving through. We saw a fair bit of rain in some centres as well from 9am this morning. 30 millimetres fell in the Brunswick. We saw about 27 millimetres at the Clarence and upwards of 10 millimetres elsewhere. Yamba 19, Ballina 18, Byron Bay 18 and Coolangatta are top of 18. Degrees with that cloud cover around at least overnight lows have remained warm in places like Byron Bay for Splendour, only dropping down to 15 degrees overnight. I'll have the full forecast for the rest of the weekend coming up. The Forestry Corporation is facing more allegations of logging breaches, this time in forests set aside for the endangered Greater Glider on the Dorigo Plateau. But the state-owned logging business claims the trees were knocked over in a recent storm and replacement habitat trees now protected from the elements. These videos were filmed by environmental activists at a remote logging operation in Clouds Creek State Forest midway between Dorigo and Nimboida. Ecologist Mark Graham says this is part of evidence to stop logging managed by Forestry Corporation. These serious crimes are being reported to the EPA. We're seeking an immediate stop work order and an injunction upon these horrific industrial logging operations. The tree at the centre of this pile is marked with a large H, which identifies it as a hollow-bearing New England blackbutt favoured by the Greater Glider. Serious breaches of the regulations that forestry operates under. A marked habitat tree has been logged and bulldozed, and a giant tree has been felled and bulldozed into a pile to be burnt. Even if not marked for protection, he claims giant trees with a girth of 1.6 metres like this one can also not be logged. Clouds Creek is a national stronghold for the endangered Greater Glider. It's facing extinction. These forests were badly affected by the Liberation Trail fire. They were recovering. The logging operation has been impacted by the weather. In a statement, Forestry Corporation says both trees fell over in a recent severe weather storm, which is why their root balls can be seen and that they have identified a replacement habitat tree to be protected from future logging. They added their activities are tightly regulated and the EPA inspected this operation last week and also that the forest is closed for safety due to fallen tree hazards created by storms and active logging. Claire Simmons, Prime 7 News. Skill shortages in regional areas are forcing companies to look to other parts of the state. One company is targeting the North Coast in a bid to get workers into short and long-term jobs. Two devastating flood disasters on the East Coast this year have seen hundreds of workers displaced from their usual employment. Tamworth's Obico Industries is hoping to provide some relief for these workers and also alleviate their own skilled worker shortages. We are going further afield to be able to try and secure staff. Um, we are struggling like every business and industry here in the region. Obico Industries is attending a careers expo next week in Lismore, engaging with local workers to offer short and long-term job opportunities. Employees have lost positions here in Lismore and this Tamworth is close enough for them to drive over there for a week and, you know, and back on a weekend. The manufacturing industry isn't the only one impacted by the skill shortage. Worker problems are rife across the board. More interventions like this needed to ease the crisis. We're oversubscribed for our expo. Um, we have more uh, 
you know, exhibitors than we had space. Businesses hoping to recruit will also have to tackle the issue of accommodation availability as these relationships grow and hope the state government will step up the assistance. We need all businesses and all industries to be highlighting this need um, with your local chambers of commerce, with your local MPs. Genevieve Lamond, Prime 7 News. Still to come in Prime 7 Local News, a national accolade for a dedicated local teacher and international experts weigh in on the housing crisis in our state. And later this news hour, how police busted a Colombian-run cartel operating right here in Australia. The BBC pays up after claiming a former royal nanny had an affair with Prince Charles. And NRL clubs take matters into their own hands as COVID threatens to derail the season. You can catch up with Prime 7 Local News anytime, anywhere on 7 Plus and stay in touch 24-7 on 7news.com.au. An international report has called for Australia's housing tax breaks for the wealthy be capped to bring down prices. Econ economists sorry, suggesting the extra tax revenue could also fund more public housing. Housing prices have soared alongside rental costs in recent years in Australia and housing tax is partly to blame. Selling a main residence at a profit is exemption to the capital gains tax, which a new report says favours the wealthy. The OECD have found that um, Australia's tax system is contributing to higher house prices. In particular, negative gearing and the capital gains tax discount are driving up house prices, making housing less affordable. The report claims these tax incentives drive up property speculation, putting Australian homes out of the reach of many. Other countries that aren't seeing rapid house prices have a better tax system um, and a better public housing system. Capping housing tax incentives could deliver more funds to spend on public housing. The capital gains tax discount costs about $10 billion and negative gearing costs about $5 billion. Over the last 18 years, housing costs have risen sharply in the last three years, locking more and more people out of ownership. People aged 25 to 29, the rate of home ownership fell from 49 to 38%. And amongst 30 to 34-year-olds, it fell from 57 to 50%. But after gains of up to 50%, a housing price peak may have been reached, making it less attractive to investors. The investors have, have certainly slowed, I think, as, as money's become harder to get. And also, traditionally, investors want to come into the market when they, they know there's capital growth in the market. The top 10% for household wealth holds 46% of all wealth in the nation, according to the charity Peak Body ACOS. Claire Simmons, Prime 7 News. A South Grafton teacher has been honoured with a national award. Holly Millican has won the National Early Career Teachers Award, presented to those who have been working less than five years. In her career so far, Miss Millican has started a mathematics Olympiad competition and created digital programs of, as acting head of South Grafton High Maths team. She has helped foster professional development across the state and supported the Eddie Wu teacher training. Still to come in Prime 7 Local News, Group 3 Rugby League hoping for a break in the weather and the Manning River Dragon Club warms up to challenge the best on the coast. Group 3 organisers have their fingers crossed for a dry night before rugby league matches kick off this weekend. After a number of cancellations this year, it's getting tough to reschedule games before the finals. Another weekend, another set of challenges for Group 3 Rugby League. Organisers and local clubs doing what they can to keep games on paddocks despite wet weather and COVID absences. COVID and uh, wet weather and ground closures has, has impacted the season pretty, pretty hard. It's been a pretty long three years uh, since James and I have been coaching the Sharks. So, yeah, it's getting, it's getting tough, but, I mean, they're, they're, it's all been circumstances out of our control, so we can only control what we can and... Yeah, but the rain, the rain sucks. 
This weekend, Wingham Tigers and Old Bar are out, with Wingham falling victim to the COVID outbreak. Old Bar was in the same situation last weekend. The Breakers and the Mustangs have been moved to Lake Cadai Sunday. All other games look to go ahead, including the Jed Roods Memorial Clash at Warhope on Saturday. But things are getting tough, with time running out before the grand final on September 17. Most of the clubs have all got one game to... Uh to catch up on, uh, but we do have two clubs that have got two games. They're possibly going to have to be played midweek now. Every game's important to us. Um, I know that, you know, say the top team, um, they probably don't need the two points where, where we need to play every game um, because I think this year there's only four teams going to the semis. Samantha Crow, Prime 7 News. The Manning River Dragon Boat Club is gearing up for a challenging weekend on the Kalang River. They've been training for months in both endurance and sprint events to take on the other northeast New South Wales teams. It's a dark early start for this Dragon Boat crew. Pump up music to help them get on the water before dawn. They've been training for months, ready to put their fitness to the test at this weekend's regatta in Coffs Harbour. We're very excited and we've trained hard. Lights strapped to foreheads, assisting before the sun rises as they train. We are all up very early and yeah, it, it's, it's the best part of the day. They'll be joined by dragon boat teams from across the New South Wales coast, stretching from Newcastle all the way up to Lennox Head. We have a 7.5k race on Saturday and we're doing the 200 metre sprints on Sunday. No matter the outcome, they say it'll be a fun and rewarding experience. I just love being on the water. It's great fitness, there's some great people. Um, I've met a lot of friends. But getting to the competition hasn't been easy. Clubs have been ravaged by the impact of floods. It's really hard for the people in Taree because the water goes straight through the sailing club. So a month ago we had to all the guys had to come in and, and lift everything to the top floor and uh, it took a couple of days before they could bring it back down again. Then we have to wait till it's safe enough to get back on the water because it gets really waterlogged close to the water here. And competitor numbers have dwindled due to COVID. We've had a lot of people dropping out because of COVID, you know, last minute dropout. The club's also encouraging others to pick up the paddle at their meet and greet the weekend following the competition. Genevieve Lamont, Prime 7 News. Still to come in Prime 7 Local News, we'll have your weather forecast. That's coming up next. G'day, g'day and happy Friday, Surf Turkeys. Well, it's a hundred year storm down here. It is an absolute dog's breakfast. Let's move on through and see what's cooking for the weekend. Well, if you're cruising around the north coast this weekend, you'd have to be off your chicken dinner to go surfing on Saturday. It is going to be an absolute washing machine. A huge swell, huge winds. Sunday, on the other hand, is looking like it's going to clean up a little and definitely worth a look. Okie dokie, as we head on down to the mid-north coast, it's a similar old picture down there. It's like the old whirlpool. It is going to be hectic. Again, Sunday is looking like the cleaner part of the weekend. Okie dokie for all you boaties and fishers up there on the north coast. It is looking like a dead set right off. Seas two and a half to four metres on a swell of five metres. Oh dear, it is looking horrible. Okay, boaties and fishers, as we cruise down to the mid-north coast, again, we're going to have seas of one to two metres on an easterly swell of three to four metres. Again, it is looking dangerous out there. Okie dokie, for all you froth doggies out there that aren't on the old Splendor Bender, it is looking like a washing machine this weekend. Huge swell and wild old winds. Sunday is looking like the pick of the two days when the wind goes southwest. Inside the points could be cooking, I don't know. This week, I'm going to give it a two out of five. Get out there, guys, and I'll see you all next week. Thanks, Brendo. It sure is looking wild out there as we head into the weekend. A whole heap of rain across the region today. Let's take a look now at what's happening on the synoptic chart. And the reason for all this wild weather is thanks to that east coast low that's whipping up those huge winds, that huge surf and causing all that rain up and down the coastline as well. We are expecting to see more of it as we head into tonight. Tomorrow we could see between 1 and 10 millimetres of rain. So the rain's starting to ease tomorrow as that east coast low moves away. And 
then on Sunday, it should be returning to mostly fine and dry conditions, much the same on Monday as well. Here's the forecast rain for the next eight days or so, and most of that rain is along the coast, as you can see there, but only up to around 40 millimetres over the next eight days. Here's the forecast now for our Saturday. Now, tomorrow, temperatures remaining warm. We're still expecting to see those gusty, windy conditions around, though, so temperatures will feel a little bit cooler than what you can see here. Tweed heads 18 down to 12 overnight. At least those overnight lows will remain warm with that cloud cover around for all those people camping at Splendour. Byron Coastal Waters, it's going to be huge out there. Don't even think about it. It's going to be wild. We do have warnings up and down the coastline as well. Here's the forecast now for Sunday and finally on Sunday it should be mostly fine. Nambucca Heads 19, Kempsey 20 and on Sunday in Coffs Harbour a top of 20. There are rainy icons there but if we'd see any rain it's not going to be more than around 5 millimetres. 18 the top in Lismore dropping down to 10 degrees overnight. The forecast for Monday looking good. Settling back down again 20 in Port Macquarie. Nambucca Heads 19 and Kempsey a top temper 21 degrees. Evans Head 20 for the start of the working week and Grafton even getting to 22 degrees. And that's all we have time for tonight. Thanks for your company. You can join the debate on our Facebook page and you can catch up on our website or at 7 plus. Right now though stay with me for Prime 7 News at 6.30.